This is Midweek Politics with Dave Pakman. Welcome to Midweek Politics. I'm David Pakman. We'll be with you for the next hour and a lot coming up on the show. And make sure you're getting our newsletter every week. Go to our website, midweekpolitics.com and sign up. And if you do receive that newsletter, you know that we'll be talking a little bit later to, well, a whole bunch of people. I won't spoil it for you, but if you're getting that newsletter, then you certainly know. Um, Where do we want to start? The oil spill. Um, It sounds honestly, I don't know if if our mics are even picking this up. It sounds like there's a flyover (laughs) of uh, some Some F-15, some kind of jet going overhead. Hopefully, you know, we're not that far down. A lot of these studios are like really deep in basements. We're not that far down. So we, we can actually hear some of the noises of the real world. We're, don't, we're one of the few studios that has a window. <laughs> <laughs> don't be confused. The reason we have not stopped the oil spill and the reason that this has been going on over 40 days at this point is money. BP would lose all future revenues from the drilling site if they used what many, I'm not an expert in this, but what many who are experts, supposedly, are saying a surefire method of ending the spill, which is you just kind of blow up the whole thing with, with you, you put a certain kind of bomb down there. I'm sure they know better than I, I do what kind of bomb it is. And you explode it and it seals the entire thing and, and the spill stops. Now, what's the downside? You can never use that site again. You can never derive any more revenues. You have to assume we're getting to the point where the cost of this to BP is getting close to what it would be to never have any more revenue from that site anyway, wouldn't it? I mean, I don't know how much revenue there is from each individual drilling site. I have no idea. I don't know how much oil's down there. The concerns for BP are constantly changing depending on what they think they can accomplish. Remember, first the concern was the oil coming ashore, and BP said, we will do everything we can to prevent the oil from coming ashore. Well, after a few days, we found dozens of dead animals, dolphins, pelicans, fish, covered in oil, washed up on the shore. So then what does BP do? They say, we're going to start strategizing about how to keep the oil from going out to sea. How could both be the main concerns? Is the concern we don't want the oil coming ashore or we don't want the oil drifting out to sea? Or is it both? And if it is, where does the oil go? Isn't it either out to sea or ashore or is there some kind of in between? You know, I just don't get it. I don't think there is an in between. I will repeat, there is no reason to believe anything that BP says at this point. And I know the anti-government crowd will hate me for this, but it's time that Obama and the government start to take some control over the cleanup. BP knows best, just does not cut it anymore. BP lied to Congress. Well, maybe you don't think they lied. I think BP lied to Congress when they were getting these offshore rigs going in the first place. They said, we know how to set up the backup systems in case something breaks. We know how to fix stuff if it breaks. We know all the safety plans. Now, if you don't think they were flat out lying then, then you must think they made some kind of mistake, right? They thought that they had the plans, but they didn't, and they just didn't know. Well, I'm getting emails from people claiming this isn't BP's fault. It's the government's fault because they approved the drilling, and they approved the drilling and safety procedures and blah, blah, blah. Well, listen, that's a silly argument, and I'll tell you two reasons why. Number one, If I get a speeding ticket and I say, hey, it's Honda's fault, even though that hybrid Civic that I drive is really slow compared to a lot of other cars, Honda made it be able to go 70, 80, 90 miles an hour, whatever. And by the way, the government and the Traffic and Highway Safety Bureau legalized the car for sale. I'm not getting out of that ticket. Am I? I mean, I don't think I am. I doubt it. Not to mention the same people that are now complaining and saying this isn't BP's fault. It's the government's fault. These are the same people that also complain about too much government intervention. Now you're saying they didn't intervene enough? Come on. That, and you, know, you have no idea, you know, Lewis, but our audience has no idea the number of emails we get saying this is actually the government's fault because they approve these rigs. There's, there's many places you could point the finger. Right. But to say that the problem is not enough government intervention when your normal Uh, talking points are there's too much government intervention just does not cut it. Now, many people were saying this is Obama's Katrina. You know, Obama's Katrina is okay. That has somewhat of a ring to it. But what about Cheney's Chernobyl? You know, I didn't come up with this. I heard that I first heard this on the Tom Hartman show. A, A caller said this is Cheney's Chernobyl. And there is a good point to be made. It's catchy. It's catchy. But the point is, Dick Cheney and his energy task force are the ones who said, you know what? We're not going to require a shutoff valve 
that could prevent exactly this type of situation. We're not going to do it because it's too expensive. We're not going to impose that on these drilling on these rigs. Cheney's Chernobyl, I think, has a better ring to it than Obama's Katrina. Now, here's the new poll in light of the oil spill. Should the new proposed offshore drilling sites go ahead as planned? Should they go ahead but be delayed at least until we get this mess solved and maybe even longer? Or should they not be built? That's on midweekpolitics.com right now. That's the new poll. So visit the website, check it out. What should happen with the proposed offshore drilling sites that Barack Obama has um, has set up? Now, there's another theory here as well, which is Democrats are purposely going to let this ride because it's going to make the offshore drilling not happen. That is, the longer the Democrats can keep this thing going, if you believe this conspiracy theory, and it's a pretty rich one, the longer we can keep this going, uh, the Democrats are saying, the worse offshore drilling will look to the public, meaning it will be much easier to prevent offshore drilling. I don't buy it. You know, I don't buy it at all. Uh, it, it just I, I don't I'm having a hard time even building an argument against it because it just uh, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Midweek politics is brought to you in part by Jackson and Connor, classically modern men's apparel in Northampton, Massachusetts, on the second floor of Thorns Marketplace by D.I.F. Design, specializing in custom business websites at D.I.F.Design.com. And by Shentrition.com, provider of all natural superfood and adaptogenic herbal blend at Shentrition.com. To find out more about underwriting midweek politics, visit midweekpolitics.com.